and their families. Late last night, we transitioned from a search and rescue mission to one of recovery and investigation. With that transition, our police department, along with their investigative and law enforcement partners, are now in charge of the operation. Our primary focus is to remove all of the cars and all of the victims in a dignified manner and, do, and not compromise the investigation in the process. The investigation is vital because we want to ensure that this type of accident doesn't happen again locally or anywhere in this country. With that, I'm going to turn the, the mic over to Juan Perez, the director of the Miami-Dade Police Department. Thank you. Good morning. Um, as I just mentioned, I'm Juan Perez from the Miami-Dade Police Department. Um, as you just heard, late last night, it was approximately 10 o'clock, when the determination was made that this no longer was going to be a search and rescue mission, and now it is a recovery and investigatory mission. So at that point, we transitioned and we became incident commander. Um, that means, what that means is our priority, which is the most critical thing, is to get to the victims, get the, to the remains of the people that are underneath that bridge so that we can take them to a proper place so that their families can have the appropriate burial and, and ceremonies that they want to have, that last chance they have the opportunity to have with their family members. This is a tragedy that we do not want to reoccur anywhere in the United States. So with us today here, and actually they got here last night, it was OSHA, NTSB, who are going to assist us through this process and work with us and do, uh, they're going to do parallel investigations with our homicide investigators. In addition to that, yesterday I had been in communication throughout the day with our state attorney, Kathy Fernandez Rundle. Uh, today she has a team of state attorneys here on the scene to help us w w moving forward with the investigation. But please do not jump to any conclusions, okay? It's important that we understand this is a homicide investigation. That's all it is. That means that somebody died. That is it. It's not mean that there is criminal charges looming or pending or anything like that. Is there a possibility for that? There's always a possibility for anything like that to occur. But it does not mean, because I already read some headlines, you know, possible criminal charges. So there could be possible criminal charges anywhere. So we're not there yet. We're not there yet, and we don't even know if that's going to lead to that. Right now, we just want to find out what occurred, what caused this collapse to occur, and people to die. We want to get to the bottom of this, uh, the, the bottom line of what occurred, so that we can bring closure to the families, bring closure to the investigation, and so that it doesn't happen again. That's the most important thing here. Now, if we find something on the way, that is why the state attorney is here with us and they are right now monitoring this investigation along with our investigators just in case that occurs and that is it so there are a lot of moving parts we mentioned yesterday about the reunification center with our victim advocates um, the, the key thing here is to provide as much comfort and show as much compassion to our victims which are also the family members that lost somebody so we have here with us our police chaplains that have come out here to provide some of that support for those family members. That's why it's also key, and I would keep reminding you to please, if you happen to find out names of victims, um, just because you guys are very good at what you do, uh, please do not disclose that uh, unless you know for a fact that we have notified next of kin that to confirm that their loved ones are the ones that are in those vehicles. We know that there's people missing. The family members know that they're missing. And what we can tell them is that we can assume that they're in there, but we cannot confirm identity of who's in there. So we're caught in a bad place right now. So the last thing we want to do is disclose names and all that. So that, you know, let us do that because we're trying to navigate through some difficult times. You know, that that has that is arisen because of this tragic event. This is a tragedy and there's nothing that we can probably do to fill the gap that's been created in the souls of the family members and friends. So it's very difficult for us to do that. So this is uh, obviously uh, for the family members. I can only empathize as all of us. So I ask you to please cooperate in that manner with us. Um, next up, I think I'm going to bring up Fire Department uh, Chief Downey to say a couple of words. 
Good morning again, Dave Downey, Miami-Dade Fire uh, Rescue. Um, as you've heard, we're assisting now Miami-Dade Police in the uh, recovery effort. We're working side by side with police and all the investigation agencies to try to bring closure uh, to this incident. We're going to remain on scene until such time as we remove every uh, victim uh, and we'll continue to work. We exhausted last night all of our search and rescue capabilities uh, in, in the hopes of finding additional survivors. We used auditory, we used visual, we used our canines, and uh, we've determined that uh, there's no longer any survivors. That's why we transitioned into this recovery mode. But we will continue to remain on scene. We'll continue to work uh, in order to get all of these victims removed. And we hope and we ask again that everybody keeps the families in your thoughts and prayers and uh, understand that this is going to be a long-term operation. Thank you. I am Robert Sumwalt, and I'm the chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. And on behalf of myself and all of my colleagues at the NTSB, we'd like to offer our sincerest condolences to those who've been affected by this tragedy. Uh, the people of South Florida have been through a lot, obviously, over the last several weeks, and this is just yet one more tragedy to add to that sad book. Uh, the NTSB has brought a full investigative go team. We have be began arriving uh, in, uh, in uh, Miami on scene here at about 10 o'clock last night. We left about 2 last night. We, we uh, met with the state, local, and federal officials, and then we did a general walkthrough of the, uh, of the area. Um, in addition to uh, our headquarters support staff in Washington, we have a 15-person team. Uh, they have expertise in civil engineering, material science, human factors, survival factors, and we brought in our specialists from our Office of Transportation Disaster Assistance who will be here to help facilitate the needs of the victims and the victims' families. I want to distinguish ourselves from the type of investigation that we're doing. You heard the director say that they are conducting a a homicide investigation, which is routine for any time someone, any time there's been a death, our investigation is completely different. Uh, we are here, we're an independent federal agency, we're charged by Congress to investigate transportation accidents, to determine the cause, to make recommendations so that something like this does not happen in the future. And that's why we are here. We are working with the local officials but we are conducting an independent investigation that is not in any way related to any criminal charges, possible criminal charges. Uh, we don't, of course, have immediate access to the site. We did a, 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 a general walkthrough last evening, but until we get uh, full access after the recovery operation is completed, uh, we uh, have not had a chance to get up and really start getting what I call an up-close and personal look uh, a real uh, investigative work, but that will begin uh, hopefully this afternoon. Uh, I do imagine that our investigators will be on scene uh, five to seven days. Uh, this will be a very detailed investigation. We have conducted bridge collapse investigations before. You may recall about 11 years ago, the Minneapolis Bridge, the I-35W, that claimed nine lives, and uh, so we do certainly have experience uh, in that. And as I've said, uh, our entire purpose for being here is to find out what happened so that we can keep it from happening again. Now depending on what we may be able to, to find, we, we, we may do a press conference this afternoon, uh, late this afternoon, to update you, uh, but given that we've not uh, been able to get in, uh, Due to the recovery operation, we may not have anything to, to report, and if we don't, we're not going to drag you all out here for a media conference where we don't have anything to report. But you can follow us at NTSB, on Twitter, NTSB underscore newsroom, NTSB underscore newsroom, or on our website, www.ntsb.gov. I certainly want to thank the state, 
local and federal authorities for their cooperation. They've uh, been great to work with, and I know that we'll continue to have an excellent relationship with them. Thank you very much. My name is Robert Sumwalt, S-U-M-W-A-L-T, and I'm the chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. Thank you very much. Good morning. This continues to be a multi-agency effort that will take some time. We are advising that Southwest 8th Street will remain closed indefinitely between Southwest 107th Avenue and 117th Avenue. We have provided a traffic detour pattern. We are asking all uh, motorists to please assist us in staying away from the area. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Okay, I'd like to thank the NTSB, Miami-Dade County Police, Miami-Dade County Fire Rescue, all other law enforcement agencies, both state, local, municipal, and federal that have arrived at the scene. Um, just asking everybody to please be patient. This, as the director was saying, this is still an active homicide investigation. NTSB will be here conducting a national trans a transfer, a transportation safety rule. So the investigation is also led at the federal level. Uh, we have understood that one of the fatalities now has been confirmed that is an FIU student. Uh, we are truly saddened to hear that. We have not yet been able to confirm whether the student is actually a City of Sweetwater resident but we are truly saddened that there was a student also that has been uh, has lost their life. We are asking everybody to be, please be patient, cooperate with all enforcement investigations, and to not try to decimate me, uh, information to the media or to the outsources. That has not been confirmed at one of these news conferences. There have been uh, several media sources that have been asking me to confirm unconfirmed, uh, un, uh, unconfirmed sources. Please don't do that. It, it really just hurts. The, the impact to the community as well as impairs the investigation. Thank you all. Okay, we'll take a couple of uh, questions in English before we do Spanish. Just call out who your question is for. Uh, and a question to the local officials. Whose decision was it not to shut down traffic while workers were working on tightening those cables? So right now, this is obviously an ongoing investigation. Those are all the answers that we're looking for as well. So, so we don't know that. We're going to have to get to the bottom of that. So we're going to have to start from the beginning, from contract, all the way to the end, uh, to the to the incident happened, and and to find out all the details. Director, what does the protocol say about that? Normally, when workers are doing that, what is the policy? Should traffic have been shut down? You're asking me engineering questions. I I cannot answer engineering questions, but we will get to the bottom of that. I don't even know if there was a stress hit. I don't even know if there was a stress test. I've been hearing that. Uh, that right now, we have not confirmed that definitely that that was the, the issue. I don't think he can talk about that either because it's part of the investigation. The answer, yeah. We're doing an investigation. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to answer all of these questions and more during the course of the investigation. All, all these things that we hear, you guys are very good. I mentioned that before. So we also listen and pay attention to what you guys are putting on the media. So when you guys are saying these things, we're also taking a look at that and to verify those things so that at the end we could come back and either, you know, prove that or disprove that. So, but yeah. But there's a county mayor and a U.S. senator yeah, for that Rubio. agency, there's not That's a, a question you have to ask. That's a question you have to ask either the U.S. senator or the mayor, who are not here right now. But he's representing the mayor, so that's why I'm asking. And he's going to give you the same answer. My answer is... My answer is we have not confirmed that there was a stress test. We've heard that just as you have, and that will be confirmed. But the, the key here is not to jump to conclusions, not to speak on speculation, but to work off of facts, and that's what we plan to do. Deputy Mayor, has anyone seen the video out of the actual collapse? And if so, does that guide you to start pinpointing where to look at what bridge to program? We have seen the video. And our engineers have seen the video, and the, the National Transportation Safety Board will see the video if they haven't already. So that, that is going to be a key piece of, of information. But as I said, the key is to be deliberate and meticulous and to work off of facts, not speculation. So that's what we intend to do. Mr. Chairman, uh, I understand it's very early and y'all just got here, but do you have any concerns with the fact that this bridge was allowed to go up and cars were allowed to go under without the 
The question is, does the NTSB have any concerns that this bridge was allowed to go up without certain precautions being taken? And, uh, you know, that that is, uh, I'm going to give you the same answer they've been giving you, is that that's part of our investigation. Uh, our investigations are very comprehensive, they're thorough, and they take a while. But when we do it, we will have those answers. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not running this press conference, but here's what we're going to do. When you have a question, I want you to raise your hand. We will call on you, and then we'll answer. And I want you to, to, to state who you are, your affiliation, and then we'll answer your question. So I'd like the PIO to be here to, to, to call, call the question. OK. Question, right here. question for you here. Raise right your right hand. One second, right here. What will be your next step in moving the concrete? How do you even go in to tackle What affiliate it? are you with? I'm with WPLG. WPLG. Okay. And who's your question for? Um, I guess the director or fire chief, whoever can talk about the next step in the so, so obviously this is going to be a, you know, a, a, it's a very difficult task because of the uh, type of equipment that are, are, it's required. So we had some of the equipment out here last night. Uh, we need to bring other equipment so that's going to be here in the scene to uh, start to remove these pieces, trying to make the pieces smaller and more controllable. So it's going to be a, a, you know, a tedious process to be able to do that. Once we uh, break that uh, large piece apart, then we'll be able to start pulling it off. So. Um, it's going to be very t tedious. So, right back here, you have a question. Your last. Sir? Yeah. Okay, Chuck. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. The, go ahead. the NTSB chair said that he was hoping they could start looking at that. So, let's do something. Does anybody have any other questions from me? I do. And then, this, this is for you. Okay, sir. Does that mean that you expect to extract what's under the bridge at some point today? Uh, we're hopeful we could do that as soon as possible. That's our goal with Chuck is to get Re the re everything we removed so we can get to those victims. Yeah? Do you already have a clear idea of how many victims like, will be under there, or is there still a possibility to find more people that can't find them? Oh, I, I, so from now on, we're not even going to talk numbers anymore because we, we expect to find other uh, other individuals down there. So t so the, what's probably best is that we, we wait to get to all the vehicles, and then we're going to give you a grand total of, of the, this, you know, a fatality and the magnitude of this event. One more question. Yeah. Last question, Glenna. Hi, Glenna Dover, WPLG. Good morning. Hi, Glenna. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Can you talk about uh, the Florida Department of Transportation last night put out information that as part uh, of the complement of people working on this, they have already determined that the engineer who was supposed to inspect various components was not pre-qualified and did not meet that contractual obligation. So, so we, we obviously we know about that as well, and so our goal now is to follow up on that. So, you know, what for DOT if they're watching or anybody else, if you have information, videos, or anything else that you think can help us, bring it to us, rather than tweeting it out or going, you know, put doing a press release on it because it's information that we like to have. So we're going to look into that. Now we have to interview DOT, get those facts, and then obviously come here to the school, interview people in the schools, and get to the bottom of all, all that as well. As a because, up, have yeah. You found any other yet? So right now, what our, our first priority is, like I mentioned, is is getting to those victims. You know, we're obviously gathering information, pieces of information. Uh, we're lucky that you know NTSB is here with us because they can shed true light at the end of the day you know with their expertise of what caused this collapse so their report will be critical for us for our findings and then the state attorneys here as well monitoring helping us to get some of that information but it's going to be a uh, this investigation is going to be ongoing way past the removal of you know not only our victims but any debris and the reopening of the streets we're going to have to continue on this investigation because it's going to be a long paper trail to get to those points. So right now, we're not going to be able to have those answers uh, for you uh, tomorrow, the next day, because you know we got to. It's a scaled approach. We're going to so. transition into Spanish, Spanish now, now, guys. Hold your okay.